Some of the references I felt were a little, but whatever. Other than a love for hamburgers, Bob's Burgers is known for the multitude of pop culture references from some classic beloved films. Take a stroll through memory lane or learn about some ones you missed with us in today's video. That was for you, Bob. Ah, jeez. Number one, put three fingers in the air. In this reference, a group of people fight to the end with a bunch of water balloons until there is only one person left standing. Sounds very much like The Hunger Games. A more obvious connection between the two is Zeke's throwaway line, Hell yeah, I'm the catnest of your pita bread. Number two, do not cite the deep reference to me, which I was there when Gene said it. Do you see a lion or a witch or a wardrobe? A what? In the second episode of the series, Gene asks Bob if he's in another dimension and if he can see a lion, a witch, or a wardrobe after Bob starts talking to the kids from the crawl space. You don't get more on the nose with a reference like that. Number three, toilet phone home. In OT, the outside toilet, the episode truly commits to the wonder of 80s classic E.T. with a familiar score, themes of friendship, and a stereotypical weird older man villain. One highlight comes in the form of the recreation of the famous bike chase scene that ends in a much more realistic way. Mom, get the car. I have to go to the toilet. Ooh, I got chills when you said that. Number four, pretty sick reference, dude. In Fluis, Luis dreams and travels to a magic land through a tornado made out of a rug, a la The Wizard of Oz. And the characters we meet along the way are voiced by Luis's family members, just like in the classic film. Okay, fine. What are we whispering about? Number five. George Clooney couldn't make it, but the reference still works. Bob's Burgers really delivered with this Ocean's Eleven homage in the Taking of Fun Time 123. Instead of a group of male con artists and gangsters robbing a bunch of casinos, you've got the Belcher kids attempting to win enough tickets to get a dune buggy at the local arcade. Now remember, eyes on the prize, ticket games only. Number six, clever girl, that Luis. In Dawn of the Peck, the episode begins with a cold open akin to the beginning of Jurassic Park. And it seems only natural to draw parallels between the wild, bloodthirsty birds and their dinosaur heritage. <gasps> I'm the alpha turkey. Yeah, that's what I thought. Number seven. Hello, Luis. In the silence of the Luis, when a disturbed student destroys school property in a vicious way, it's up to Luis and the other evil-minded child in the show, Millie, to figure out who it is before the school's trip to the water park is cancelled. If that doesn't sound like the dynamic between Clarice and Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, well then you lack some imagination, friendo. I'll help you in exchange for playdates. Number 8. Hasta la vista. Luis. In the Fraun files, Bob and Linda are called into Mr. Fraun's office and are made to read the kids' creative writing projects. Luis, of course, bases her essay on The Terminator, with Mr. Fraun playing the famous robotic villain from the franchise. Are you a super strong robot from the future? Wait, don't answer that, that's rhetorical. Number 9. Don't you forget about this film reference. In The Runway Club, an instrumental version of Don't You plays in the background as we get to see a montage of the Belcher kids and their friends being dropped off at Saturday detention. The formula is very Breakfast Club-esque. Uh, no thanks. If you need me, I'll be zoning out pretty hard over here. Number 10. Dun dun. Dun 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 dun. The deepening is probably the most obvious movie reference in this video, as it not only follows the plot of Jaws, but it features the characters watching and commenting on a Jaws-like movie called The Deepening. The parallels and many references are spot on, from Teddy fake scratching his nails on a chalkboard, to the play on the iconic line, we're gonna need a bigger boat. This episode is guaranteed to brighten your day and remind you of that terrifying shark film that still holds up. I've had dreams like this. Number 11. Gene, do the truffle shuffle. Do it. The Belchies is a clever and nostalgic look at the 80s classic The Goonies. It's actually the perfect movie for this crew to parody, since it's about a group of weirdos and eclectic characters looking for buried treasure. Tina, Jean, Luis, and their closest confidants fit the description almost too perfectly, and a treasure hunt makes total sense as a mischievous adventure for the gang to go on. Just so you know, we're not sharing the treasure with you, 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 and you. Number 12. Red Rum. Red Rum. Bob probably enjoys Red Rum. The episode Crawl Space isn't really an homage episode in of itself. The title isn't a play on words, but halfway through the episode, when Bob starts hallucinating Shining-esque bar scenes, is when the homage really gets cooking. Of course, the episode doesn't end like the movie did, for good reason. Here's Bobby! I found him. Number 13. 
Was there any chance we wouldn't mention this episode? In the musical episode, Work Hard or Die Trying Girl, Tina betrays Jean to star in the rival musical because Jimmy Jr. is in it. Louise capitalizes off her brother's art by charging people $5 at the door. And finding out Jean has been writing a Die Hard musical for years is very much in character for him. A musical which combines both films into one show is a perfect episode and a perfect entry for our list of references. I'm a Die Hard freak. Check it out. Bonnie Bedelia. Number 14. I ain't got time to bleed. In episode 7 of season 11, Louise tells a story as she turns the Predator into the Breditor, making Jean into Dutch and Bob into a bread-based version of the Alien Hunter. Her movie turns the deadly camouflaging beast into a bread monster that shoots a laser that turns people into pastry items. Yummy. Goodbye, gluten mutant. You're toast. Number 15. A reference that actually doesn't have anyone dead. In Dawn of the Peck, the town is overrun by attacking creatures like Dawn of the Dead. Not to mention the title of the episode is a pun on that exact movie. Uh oh, looks like we've got company. Bad company. Number 16. He knows Kung Fu. In Weekend at Mort's, all Bob wants to do is build a replica model of the bus from Speed, the 1994 action movie starring Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock. The replica even comes with a miniature Keanu. Hope it's as good as the model. It is. Keanu. Number 17. It's just hard to take a bunch of gangsters snapping that seriously. In Burger War, Bob gets riled up and plans to go over to deal with his rival, Jimmy Pesto. Linda is behind him and refers to the popular musical turned movie, West Side Story. She thinks of their rivalry like the one in the movie, snaps her fingers to the beat, and sings, We're going to a rumble. She even makes a remark about Tom Selleck, mustache and all. Dun dun, dun dun. Dun dun. Rumbo! Stop. Number 18. This next entry mostly comes at night. Mostly. In Mom's Lies and Videotape, Tina's retelling uses characters and story elements from the Alien franchise, including Sigourney Weaver, the mechanical suit from Aliens, and of course, the iconic jumpsuit. I a tough lady named Sigourney with a complicated backstory and a great jumpsuit. Number 19. Only Luis would want to imitate this character. In The Wolf of Wharf Street, Luis dresses up as Anton from No Country from Old Men, who Linda refers to as the hunky guy. We would not refer to this character as hunky. No offense to Javier Bordem. Ooh, a hunky killer. The best kind, huh? Number 20. Continuing our musical film references in the show, in The Fraun Files, Bob and Linda are called into Mr. Fraun's office and are made to read the kids' creative writing projects. Gene writes about a performing fart school from the 80s akin to the one in Rock and Roll High School. Classic Gene. So beautiful. His farts set them free. He's a hero. Don't you get it? Any references you love from the show we didn't mention? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more animated content. And thanks for watching The Things Animated.